Okay, next let's learn SQL functions. These are particularly useful. So we're going to write a SQL statement that shows the average salary of all employees in each location. Perfect. All right, copy. Let's paste this into here. So display location ID, city, and average salary. Okay, location ID first. City and average salary. So for now, I'm just going to put salary. Now, this is not the average of the min max salary. This is the average of actual salaries right there across each location. So we want to combine records. Right now, each record refers to an individual employee, but clearly we want to combine all records by location, ID, and city, which is the same right there, one to one relationship there and then give an average salary. So where is it going to come from, first of all? Well, to do that, we need each individual employee record because we need their salary. And then we also need location, but we don't need position. So let's clear out one of our joins because we don't need the position table. We will need to join employee and location, though. However, there was no criteria listed. Also, I don't think there was any ordering listed, was there? Nope. So we've got the display, and it wants to call it average salary. OK. So let's get rid of the order as well then. So here's how we do this. If we just run it as it is, let me show you what we get back. Okay, ambiguous column name, a location. Oh, I'm glad this came up. So, so far in our select statement, we've only been including attribute names. Sometimes when we join two tables together, an attribute name becomes ambiguous. That's because location ID is included both in the location table as a primary key and here in the employee ID is, uh, as a foreign key. Now you might say, well, it doesn't matter which one you pull it from. It's going to be the same either way. That's true. However, it is possible to have an attribute that's not a key with the same name as some attribute in another table that's not a key where those two attributes represent different things. If that's the case, then we need to include the table name before the attribute name. For example, employee.locationid. So we know which table, which attribute we're referring to, the one in the employee table or the location table. Now, in our case, it doesn't matter if we pull it from the employee table or the location table. So just pick one and just make it a table name dot attribute name. Technically, we could do that for all of these. We could say location dot location city and uh, employee dot salary. But if there's only one attribute called location city across both tables we're selecting from, then it doesn't matter. The SQL engine will know which one we're, will know what we're talking about. And we don't need to have a table prefix there. All right, so that'll fix that problem. Let's run that. All right, here we go. So each record again represents an employee, although we didn't select their name, so we don't see their name. But we want to now average up everything for each city. So the way we do that is by putting a SQL function, AVG, and we input as a parameter into that function the name of the field that we want to be averaged. Now if we do that it's going to give us an error because it says well hold on I can't return one record and and an average salary for that record uh, because there's only one salary for this record. It needs to know in other words how do you group records together into a single record and so to grouping them we want we want to group them together by location ID and city. So a group by statement comes after our joins and after our where clauses, but before our order buys. So in our group by, we have to put anything that is selected that doesn't have an average or some other function around it. So let me show you what this does here. Oh, uh, lo oh location ID, not location. OK. So now we have one record for Salt Lake City, Atlanta, New York City, and the average salary for each of them. Now, in this case, we didn't need location ID as well. The only purpose of pulling that in was to let you see that if there's anything you have up here, for example, let's say we took location ID out of there, it would give us an error and it would say, oh, <laughs> of course, it works now when I do it. Field of aggregated query, neither group nor I. Okay, so here it, it is giving us a little warning. It says we knew what you meant, but technically, according to basic transact level SQL requirements, anything up here that is not in the average should be included down here in the group by statement. So if we were to group by more things, 
So now we get that errors gone. If we were to group by more things, it would give us more records. So for example, let's say we also want to group by, well, let's see, maybe state won't work because there's no two cities in, this, in the same state. How about if we were to group by gender? So if we added gender in here, then it would give us males at Chicago versus females at Chicago. Gender. Run. So see, now we have two records for Boston. We should order by, in that case, location city so that it keeps them together. So here we have males, females, and then some people that didn't have gender listed at all. Uh, and you see, you now have more records because, and then Salt Lake City only has males, evidently. So, uh, here we go. Let's go back to what it was originally wanting for the question. So as I add more things to my group by list, it expands it and breaks it out further. As I remove things out of it or create fewer things, it uh, gives us fewer results in, our, in, uh, in the table. All right, so that's one example of a function. We'll have some more later.